Hello YouTubers, fellow hams, anybody else who happens to be watching. Well, stimulus check came around during the pandemic and I always try to spend mine on an American company. It's designed to stimulate the American economy, so why not put the money back into the American economy, right? So I decided to upgrade my laptop. Now back when I started to live in the RV, I'd sold my tower and computer and uh, accessories and bought a laptop. And I went out and I found this Lenovo IdeaPad 110. Yeah, there it is. Um, used at a computer store. I don't remember what I paid for it. Uh, it wasn't too bad, but it was a Core i5, uh, two cores, f uh, eight gig of RAM, a big 15.7 inch screen that was only at, um, it's that resolution that's slightly higher than 720p. Uh, uh, 1236 by 768 or something like that. Um, but it got me by. You know, it, it's gotten me by for two and a half years now. It's put up with the desert dust and, and all of that, and it's worked okay. But just okay. I was ready for an upgrade. I need more power. So I picked up this sleek little beauty here. This is the System76 Darter Pro laptop. And this is a beastie of a machine. This is more powerful than my tower computer that I had back when I was uh, living in a house. It's fantastic. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's go look at their website first off and see who System76 is. And then we'll take a closer look at the laptop itself. Looking at the uh, System76 website, it's quite clean and nicely designed. They show all the different computers they sell, some desktops and some laptops of various types and shapes and forms. Pretty nice site. If we go down and we look at About Us, we can see some pictures of the team at System76. It's a pretty small uh, company. A bunch of Linux enthusiasts and hobbyists, I guess, that uh, got together and decided to sell Linux laptops. If you wanted to uh, purchase a machine, just like Dell used to do, you can build it to order. So we scroll down here and we look through their available offerings. And this is the one that I had, the Darter Pro. And it gives you some information here. But if you look down here, there's a little button, Design and Buy. If we click on that, we go into where we can configure our machine. And we can choose the operating system, uh, Ubuntu or Pop! OS. We can choose the processor. We can choose how much RAM we want in it, up to 64 gig in this case. And then we can choose the drives um, that you can go with um, and, and a second drive if you want a second drive. And there's a few accessories you can add on, a charger, a CD drive, bags, laptop bags, warranty options. And interestingly, they have a recycling tag here. You can have them send you a shipping label and they will recycle your old laptop. So a pretty nice site. System76 is an American company. They're located here on the east side of Denver, Colorado, in a small office building. We'll zoom in here and take a look at the satellite view and we'll, uh, we'll be able to see it. So right here in the good old US, I felt pretty good about spending my stimulus check with an American company. So let's have a closer look at the laptop itself. Here I have a picture of it side by side with the Lenovo so you can see that it's actually taking a smaller amount of space on the desk even though it has roughly the same size screen. Here we can see the uh, Lenovo screen and if we look at the screen on the darter it's about the same. Nice 15.7 inches I think. Uh, full HD resolution. Um, the uh, keyboard is backlit which looks pretty cool. The uh, ports along the side, it gives you quite a bit of interfaces. On the uh, left side, we have a, an HDMI port and the power plug. There's a USB uh, 3 port and then a USB-C port next to it. And then that final port there is uh, Thunderbolt. On the other side, um, the ports on the right side, we have, um, starting from the back of the laptop, the Kensington lock port. Uh, an Ethernet port, that little door flips down there to let you plug in an Ethernet cable. Uh, the power LED, uh, the power switch, the uh, uh, pa uh, battery LED, which will, I think, pulse when it's in hibernation. Another USB port, a micro SD card slot, and then the headphone port. 
The headphone port is a headset type port. It does both headset, headphone and microphones, and it intelligently will um, know, that, well, it'll ask you if you're just plugging in a head, uh, headphones instead of a headset when you plug them in. On the back, I don't have a picture of it, but there's just a vent on the back. The power on speed of it, it's quite quick. Let me uh, show you this little video clip here where we boot it up. There's our BIOS startup messages. Ah, I've got the disk encrypted. Don't look. Forgot I encrypted the disk, which is supposed to make it slower, but it really isn't going to be all that slow. There we go. There's our login right there. Don't look. There we are. Up to the desktop. So less than 30 seconds from power on, I'm up on my desktop. I think it was more like 20. Very quick to boot up. Also, uh, sleep and suspend and uh, wake up times are very, very quick. Let's go ahead and put it to sleep by closing the lid. And I'm watching the LEDs over on the side. You can't see them, they're over here. And there it goes, it's now flashing. So it is asleep. Of course, that's not the important part. The important part is how quick does it wake up. Are you ready? And there we are. Okay. So as you can see, instant on pretty much. It looks like a Chromebook almost. It just wakes right up. So yeah, it boots up really quick. It um, comes out of hibernation instantly. I'm loving that. Uh, the whole machine is much faster. Uh, the specs on mine, let me pull those specs up for you here. Uh, I got the... Um, uh, the one, well, let's see, processor first off. I got a, the i5, the Core i5 version. It's the current 11th generation, I think, i5, 4.2 gigahertz, four cores, eight threads. I got it with 16 gig of uh, RAM, and it's uh, got a one terabyte NVMe um, drive, which is extremely fast. I'm just amazed at how fast this thing is. And then, you know, the other usual stuff, it's got Wi-Fi 6 plus Bluetooth, it's a full HD display, as I mentioned. Um, it's the embedded Intel Iris uh, graphics. I could have got the NVIDIA, but I'm not using it for gaming. This will be fine for me. And I can still play some games on it. It's fast enough. And as you can see, I paid $1,303 for it. So, you know, it's on par with, say, buying one of the fruity Apple products. The keyboard, as I said, is backlit, which looks really cool. You can set the color. They have several built-in colors, but through Linux, you can really set it to any color you want. Uh, it's a beautiful keyboard, and the the, uh, the travel is just about right. It uh, feels very comfortable to type on. I have no problems typing on it. Uh, an interesting design feature, um, the feet uh, under the laptop. If we look at the back of the laptop here, you'll see these little rubber nubs uh, sticking out. And when we open the laptop, you'll see that those are actually the rear feet, and they lift the rear of the laptop slightly off the desk. That was, that's an interesting design feature. Uh, I think that it helps to cool it, because the fan vents on the bottom get a little bit more of a gap. Now, um, this is so, so much faster than my old Lenovo, and that extra screen real estate really makes it nice for editing. Take a look at the uh, editor on my uh, on the old Lenovo here. I'll pull the screen up. And you can see how cluttered and crowded that is. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, I had to move and shift things around and scroll up and down within the areas of it when I was editing. Uh, drove me nuts. Uh, and to compare, here is the editor on the uh, Darter. And it's got about the same real estate that I used to have on my huge monitor with my tower. And everything is spaced out. I can see more video tracks. I don't have to shift things around. It's a dream to work on. This screen is really nice. Um, the uh, rendering times, I did a benchmark. I did uh, a render using the uh, Lenovo. And it was of the uh, video that I did on the cage dipole. Render time for the uh, Lenovo on that video was 36 minutes and 23 seconds. Now if we go and we look at the same render time on the uh, Darter, uh, 10 minutes and 18 seconds, so a little more than three times faster. Why, that's nice. That's, uh, that's going to save me some time on bigger videos for sure. 
Uh, I guess I should talk about the operating system. So let me pull up a screen recorder and we'll show you. The system that they include is Pop OS, which is based on Ubuntu. Uh, 20.04 or 20.10 presently, which are the current long-term support and um, more recent in release. Uh, it uses GNOME 3 as the default desktop. As it comes configured from System 7.6, it's a fairly straightforward setup. The uh, super user key, normally called the Windows key, brings up an overview of everything that's running. You can see I've got OBS running, which is recording the screen right now. Workspaces over here on the side, and you can define how many of those you have or want. The dock over here for launching uh, quick, uh, quick launching things. Uh, like, you know, Firefox is there. Um, you can also type in an application to search for something. So if I wanted LibreOffice uh, Writer to write something, I could just start typing write and look at there's LibreOffice Writer, click on it. So the super key is a nice, uh, fast way to get to an application. No matter what you're doing, just tap the super key, type in something, and you can find it. Uh, System 7.6 adds some of their own stuff. Uh, there's this interesting thing up here, tiling windows, that I've only begun to play with. But the idea there is that you can, well, let's, let's turn it on. And we'll go and we'll launch uh, Firefox again. And then we'll launch something else. Uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with LibreOffice, LibreOffice Writer. And you can see it tiled the windows on the display. Now, I'm set to a lower resolution to make it easier for you guys to see what's going on. But at full HD resolution, there's actually enough space to allow you to do uh, multiple things this way. And you can, you know, switch between them with the keyboard, the Alt tab and all that. You can expand the windows. Um, shrink them back down. So it's kind of an interesting way to work if you have a lot of things going on at once and you want to keep an eye on something, you can tile your windows. So there's uh, far more utility here that I'm touching on. I have yet to learn how to use it. I come from the Mate desktop. I've used the Mate or Mate desktop for a very long time and I'm quite used to that. So I'm forcing myself to learn GNOME 3. I may install Mate ultimately. I don't know. We'll see. Other than that, it's basically GNOME 3. Uh, they have some of their own utilities, I think. Yeah, PopShop. PopShop is their application installer, which makes it fairly easy to search for and find applications. You can search by subject matter, communications, and so on down here. You can type in what you're looking for that you want to install. Um, nothing comes to mind. Let's look at a ham radio thing. Yeah, there we go, FL Digi. Uh, FL rig, you know, and so on. You just click the install button to install it. Uh, you can also um, check for and install updates at this position and this program. Uh, installed will show you all your installed applications. If there's uh, something you want to uninstall, you just click on it and you can uninstall it there. Uh, so yeah, that's Pop Shop. So that's their application store. I still like to use Synaptic for most of my stuff, but that's just me. So that's pretty much the user interface. I'm getting used to it. Uh, it's, it's pretty quick and easy to work with, but it's basically GNOME 3. So if you're familiar at all with GNOME 3, then you'll be familiar with this user interface. I could do an entire video on the OS, but um, that's out of the scope of this particular video. So that's the OS, Pop OS. Uh, it's available for download. You can install it on your own existing hardware. I have installed it on my Lenovo two weeks before I got this laptop, this new laptop to get myself used to it. So uh, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I'm getting used to it. So that's my new laptop. And this is the first video that I'm editing on it. And as you saw, it's much faster. Uh, editing is gonna be so much nicer now with the bigger screen real estate too. Uh, it's gonna make my job a lot easier. I, I had a lot of frustrations with that smaller, pixel-wise, smaller uh, uh, screen on the uh, Lenovo. So anyhow, um, yeah, it's, uh, there's probably a few people that are going to go out and hop in the comments and say, well, gee, you paid an awful lot of money for this hardware when you could have bought whatever, um, HP, Dell, Acer, whoever's still making laptops uh, for less. But uh, being an open source uh, focused company, which fits perfectly with me because I'm a strong open source advocate, 
I have no commercial software here at all. Everything that I do is open source. Uh, it just seemed like a good fit. And I'm pretty happy with it. I'm sure you pay a little bit more. Uh, it's uh, on par with like buying a MacBook. And it's uh, uh, on par quality wise. I mean, it definitely probably exceeds a MacBook. It's an aluminum case, which I might have pointed out earlier. So it's all metal. It's a really nice construction. It's uh, uh, fully serviceable. That's a big point. Uh, this is fully serviceable. Unlike the fruity products, where uh, they don't let you fix them and they want to charge you an arm and a leg to replace some other board instead of fixing a simple broken connector, as Lewis Rossman likes to point out often in his videos. Uh, this one is fully serviceable. It's easy to take apart. It's easy to upgrade. I can add RAM to it. I can change things out. I can change the battery. It's a breeze. Everything just comes apart. It's really easy to work on. So, yeah, looking, looking at, at it from that point of view, this thing is serviceable. It's open source based. I may or may not have mentioned that even the firmware, the uh, BIOS, has been replaced with Core Boot, which is an open sourced um, bootstrap firmware for the hardware. Uh, so, yeah, I own it. You know, I, I own it. That's the thing. The only thing in here that's being licensed, I guess you could say, would be the microcode in the processor or the firmware in the processor. Um, everything else, fully open. I'm not paying somebody to use it. I own it. It's mine. I can do whatever I want with it, and I'm happy. All right, back to uh, radio stuff. The next video might be an antenna video. I've got another idea there. So until then, well, take care, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.